Look, I don't know what he's gonna do down there, but I got a bad feeling he's not gonna come with us quietly. I want you to take us in and get us close to that portal as fast as you can. Without going over the limit. Hang on, fucking pause, shit. just a fucking minute. I'm sorry, why isn't that woman immediately running to the XO and saying, we have got the daughter of Jean-Pierre Mao on this ship, clearly in disguise, can we not do something about this immediately, considering that Mao is in jail? <laughs> Play. Trip, that's SOP, that's understood. Copy, LT. Minimum duration, breaking burn. I didn't know Jordan. I only spoke with him a few times, and I regret that I didn't know him better. We can't know all of the burdens that Jordan carried. He isn't here anymore to ask. But we can remember him and the shared burdens that we all carry now. And we can treat each other gently. Reach out to those in need. It will increase our joy and diminish our pain. And it will honor Jordan. Thank you. I think I just saw someone who didn't want to be seen. Joel Piermau's daughter, Clarissa. She was disguised as a service tech. I was gonna call security, but look, our fathers are cut from the same cloth. If she's on the run because of him, I don't want to be responsible for making it worse. Are you going to reach out to her? You think I should? I think you should do what you think is right. You can trust your judgment. <laughs> you obviously don't know me very well. He's gonna end up dead. Wow. This feels like one G. Yeah, you're welcome. You got atmosphere too. Oh my god. Okay. It's like when my hand was growing on else. Oh shit. Close now. It's building a person of shit. that thing could end up killing everyone I love. The same people she died to save. No risk, no reward. You died together to tear you apart one atom at a time. Or did you burn? That's a good distinction because if it is Miller helping, that's one thing. If it's just a protomolecule trying to achieve something, how do we know that's in our interests? It could mean the obliteration of everything else that exists. And I'm now terrified thinking, oh my God. Is that exactly what the proto molecule did to Miller to get hold of him? Was present him with a version of Julie that's gonna really fuck with me because I love that episode, it was beautiful, and they're messing with it, they're tearing at my heart. Oh god, 
And now Ashford's coming to Camino, so I'm guessing we're going to find out pretty soon if what his intentions are. I'm really not clear. I can go either way with him based on what funny look he gives at, at any given moment, so I've not even got a theory. Here we go. Play. Captain. I'm trying to help you. Yet still you call me out in front of the crew. Yeah, I could have done that better. You did what you meant. You put it in everyone's head. And after I left, I bet you were all praised for me, yeah? How important it is to respect the captain and so on. That way when the turn come and you take over, they all know it was because you had to. No choice. Oh, we have a problem. We need to walk it out. Or else what? Oh, fuck. Clarissa? Oh, fuck. She's gonna kill her. Tilly Fagan, I was friends with her sister, Julie. A little. You have me confused with someone else. No, she clearly fucking doesn't. No, I don't. Whatever your dad did or didn't do, you had nothing to do with any of it. It's not his fault, it's Holden's. He's gotta pay. Clarissa, whatever happened, you have no reason to be suffering for it. <laughs> uh oh. Shit. Crazy kid story. She said, Oh, fuck, it's not music. Whatever happens, wherever you go, you're not gonna do it alone. Fuck me. When a child dies, this sort of angel takes their hand and falls with them. Halfway, you know, so they. Be afraid. I tried to be the angel, but I was so scared. She held my hand. And I told her, if you fall with me, then you can be for halfway. Good to see you, Miller. Oh, shit. Holden, stay where you are. You stay where you are. Get the hell out of here, Bobby. I don't want you to get hurt. Listen to me. I have to do this. There's no way to explain, but you gotta trust me, please. Think about Amos. Alex. Think about Naomi. Doesn't want to hurt us.
Oh my god. I don't quite know how I'm going to be able to explain what I just saw. But it looked like... It looked like a possible way of us being able to conceive of space-time. Because imagine each of those rings was opening into different space-time. That's a bit what it looked like for me. I don't, I have no idea what it is, but that would be my guess. There were loads of them. And then they started to explode. And then it was like we fired something out and it set up another one and that exploded. And Holden saw all of it. He saw, it felt like he saw like every moment in time. He certainly saw the entire history of the current proto molecule that we've seen. From, you know, the Eros and the Arbogast, it was sort of like he went backwards in time. And then it was like he was back in the bubble, but instead of just the one access point into our solar system and our bit of space time that we've seen, there were multiple that were now visible to him. And so I wonder if actually they're, they're there all the time but we can't perceive them without the help of, you know, this advanced being, whatever the hell this advanced species is. As Miller put it, your mon you monkey, me Mozart. Clearly we are not matched. Whatever this is, it operates at levels that we, we will probably struggle to conceive of, let alone actually be able to manipulate in the way that they can and that's fascinating this is flat out become my favorite sci-fi program of all time i just i don't know how you top this i i, I don't think i've ever seen sci-fi deal with an intelligence this much greater than us in this quite this ter terrifying way I actually think probably the closest I've seen come to was Q in Star Trek The Next Generation. Thou art notified that thy kind have infiltrated the galaxy too far already. Thou art directed to return to thine own solar system immediately. That's quite a directive. Would you mind identifying what you are? We call ourselves the Cube. Oh, thou mates call me that. It's all much the same thing. I present myself to thee as a fellow ship captain, that thou mates better understand me. Go back whence thou camest. Stay where thou art. He's frozen! He would not have injured you. Do you recognize this? The stun setting? Knowing humans as thou dost, Captain, wouldst thou be captured helpless by them? Now go back, or thou shalt most certainly die. Um, a little bit the Borg, but I think after a certain amount of time, once we've beaten the Borg a few times, they kind of became less scary they were sort of knowable um, and they were still operating with in our constraints of um physics and time and you know and everything else what was terrifying about q was how primitive we were to q and even q presented as a physical being that we could recognize simply because that's the only way we would know that we were encountering q and I have not felt this feeling of like genuine inferiority and confusion and fear since Q popped up on Next Generation. But this is like a whole other level. <sighs> it was very clever, the revisiting of Miller and Julie Mang. They gave us those damn, is it cello or violin? Um, 
incredible piece of music that just had me crying all over again. <sighs> Miller. And also now I've just completely skipped over the fact that everything has been frozen by the proto molecule. So actually, actually Anna's theory was pretty much bang on. They're perceived as threats, but if they move slowly enough and are kind of innocuous enough, then the pr the proto molecule, the ring, whatever, the what did he call it? The station um, won't take a won't take any major actions. They're allowed to just kind of be tourists inside the ring, but if they begin to kind of get in the way of the plan, move too quickly, fire a weapon, become a, a more significant threat, then we've seen the station will act. Station security will take over. And we had another major disassembling this episode, which was fantastic. I just, I can't get enough of the proto molecule just taking things apart. So at this point in time, Naomi, the Thomas Prince, the Sushin, whatever it's called, everything in that space has stopped. It has been frozen, which was a pretty good time for that to happen because Clarissa was in the middle of attempting to kill whatever her name is, the debutante woman, the aging debutante as she put it. Clarissa did a little cheat trick. So I'm guessing there must be something in a tooth or something that's like but when she first did it, it reminded me of like the cyanide thing that the Nazis used to do and Russian spies and stuff, but it's clearly some sort of energy boost. But it looks like she was stopped mid-slaughter there by the station, which is fantastic because I hope this means that she doesn't get to kill her and she gets caught because I'm done. I'm, I'm done with... Clarissa Melba, Mao. I do, I'm honestly really dislike her. <laughs> no Avasarala again. I am grieving for my girl Avasarala. I miss her. I love her take on this. What is she thinking? This information has got to be getting back to the UN, right? I want to see a scene where Avasarala is telling me what she thinks about this and cussing Clarissa Malai or something. Ugh. On the behemoth, we have a major clash going down between Kamina and Ashford. And Ashford did use the standard tactic. Kamina described it entirely right. We don't yet have confirmation if that is his intention. If it's not, then he needs to declare it pretty fucking quickly because he is acting so shady. We kind of need some clarity now on if he's going to back her or not because otherwise he's just fucking about and it's creating some instability on the behemoth. And I didn't like the way that that door closed on them in there. I feel like there was going to be a fight to the death between those two. And obviously Ashford is no slouch, but neither is Kamina. So I think that's going to be a very interesting fight the only problem is i love kamina i'm gonna be really upset if she's taken out and naomi is never gonna forgive herself <sighs> i did actually have a brief panic when the station started on the martian troops because i was like oh my god is this how bobby goes out in this moment like this i'm disappointed that i guess what more do i expect from bobby she wants to be a marine there's only so much sacrifice one woman can make but I feel like with everything she's seen and learned uh, and everything she was teaching, remember those stupid little twats that we picked up on the Casey? She was saying, you know, it's your duty is to find out who the real enemy is. It's like, yeah, and you can do that if you're in Team Rosinante. You can't do that as, as a member of the Martian Navy. So I think at some point she's going to have to choose if she is going to be a grunt, someone who follows orders, because that's what you do in those situations, you follow orders, or she actually follows her own morality and what is actually right in a given situation. And I personally hope that she picks the latter and gets back in with the Rosinante crew, because then we're all back together again, except to Vassarana. 
and Prax. So I don't know if Prax is now gone forever. I don't know if they've just dialed Avasarala out. But I, I'm the Secretary General of the UN. We've never seen Esteban again. I mean, good riddance, but I would have liked to have seen Esteban's demise. Oh, you, it's really interesting because you can obviously, I know at this point that the showrunners have been told that the show wasn't going to be picked up again. So when they were making this, they were making it in with the like all likelihood this would be the last couple of episodes of this series so they're attempting to complete a story you know or at least take the story far enough that people would feel complete if they couldn't find someone else to take on season four so i'm hoping that as part of that we do maybe get some kind of character conclusions to those people because it felt like they you know they were main characters there and they've just been curiously absent but another absolutely incredible episode of this programme. I can't believe we're only three episodes away from the end. And then we've got to wait for season four. I don't like it. I don't like it. I like having the expanse of my life. It's going to hurt. But I do then get to Google everything about the expanse. Um, what I will do is probably do a bunch of fan-made stuff. You know, I'll go through and find some reactions that I can do based off, you know, tribute videos and all that kind of stuff that we can do with The Expanse so we can kind of keep ourselves ticking over before we get to season four. This was spectacular, absolutely spectacular, and I can't wait for episode 11 to, to kind of get a better understanding of exactly what did Jim see and what does it mean for humanity and what did he unlock? Amazing. Until the next time. Bye-bye.